Welcome to this build video. In this video we're going to take this tarot frame that we did a review on a while ago and actually build it up and put all the components on. Now we're going to use 1806 motors, we're going to use 12 amp ESCs, unfortunately they're not going to be small enough to fit in these little gaps here but they will zip tie onto the top. We're going to add the FPV system and also the control board and a receiver as well. Now, before we actually get to doing things with the ESCs and motors, just want to give you a few tips of how you should think about this when you're starting to build it. I've put a lot of thought and effort into trying to figure out the best components to go into this frame, because although the frame itself is reasonably roomy or appears so, an awful lot of that space is actually for the battery. So even up here at the top, things get cramped really fast. So what I would do is I would actually work on it as two components. I'd work on it as the top part, as the FPV system, and I'd work on the bottom part as the standard flight controller and the receiver as well. So first of all, let's just put the FPV equipment to one side. And what we'll do is I'll show you what I've done before we start getting the rest of the pieces out, because all I've done is just stuck a few components onto the chassis. So the first thing you'll notice is I've gone for a CC3D Atom. Very small, very lightweight, I don't really want any GPS or any other capabilities here. It'll run Open Pilot and it'll run Clean Flight as well. I'm going to run Open Pilot on this because I just want a very simple, smooth flying quad. Um, I have plugged in the couple of cables from the power distribution board to keep it neat, but we'll sort that out properly when we come to actually put on the speed controllers and the motors on the arms. You'll also notice that I've installed a little receiver as well, just using the first three cables here. So if any of the things we're looking at here for this build don't make sense, I'd heartily recommend go and have a look here at the CC3D build series where we actually built a model from scratch step by step. We didn't miss anything out. We used the CC3D slightly bigger brother, but everything we're going to do in here at a very superficial level is detailed step by step, piece by piece, without missing any steps in that video series. So this video is going to be more about how you put it all together and what I've found and the best options to make this little quad fly great rather than exactly step by step how you're going to plug it together. We will cover it, but it'll be very high level. And if you don't understand everything, that other playlist will help. So we have a PPM receiver at the back, it's going to be connected to my little Spectrum radio and we are going into here. Now we could have used uh, Tyrannus or any other receiver, but I'm just popping things here that I had in the spares bin. So the next thing we're going to have to do with this piece is we're going to have to install the motors and the speed controllers on each of the arms and we're going to have to wire up the power distribution board as well. And then the last thing will be to plug each of the speed controllers into the CC3D. So that is the power and control system. And actually, you know what? With it all together, you could fly it like that. It would work. And in fact, we'll be looking at a frame from Taro in a little while that looks very similar to this without the big bulge at the top. The FPV equipment, because there's only really one connector from the base, which is the JST power lead, which powers everything, the FPV equipment is a piece of cake. You just need to install it in the top. Now, what I have done here is I've installed my Fat Shark video transmitter here at the top. What I did with a needle file was just very lightly take out two little dints either side of this mounting plate. That let me get a cable tie around it just to keep it in place. And then out of that, we have the cable for the camera. I've just curled it up in here with this nice big dome. There's lots of room to kind of keep the cables out of the way. And then that cable is coming down to the Fat Shark camera. I'll talk about how I've mounted that in a sec. And then the only other thing here is the actual power lead that goes into the transmitter. I've just connected a little JST connector that will connect onto the flying lead that's coming out of the power distribution board. And that should power everything. Now, in terms of mounting the camera, all I've done here is use my classic method. I'll put a link in the description for how I tend to mount my cameras if you haven't seen that video, but it's a bit of black foam board. The TVL700 Fat Shark camera is mounted on top of that, and that allows me to get the cable out of the middle of the back of that piece of card because it comes out the side here and I could have cut a hole 
in the mounting bracket here for it, but I didn't want to do that. So I've actually mounted the camera on top of a bit of foam. That foam allows me to get the cable out of the middle. Hopefully the camera can see that. And then that's pretty standard stuff. And there's a hairband wrapped around the whole thing going around the actual frame too. So if you're not sure how I mount my cameras, let me put you onto that um, video and that will take you through it as well. So now we have the FPV kit. The only connector I need is the little JST lead, which will connect onto there. So once I've connected those two power leads up, all I need to do is screw the bracket, um, the hinge onto the front, and that'll hinge over. But for now, I'm gonna keep the FPV kit out the way. We don't need that. That's just gonna get in the middle of everything. Okay, so now we have the frame. The next thing we need to do is get the packet that includes the motors and the ESCs, and we need to start plugging everything onto this bottom part. So the props we're going to use on this craft are these Emacs ones. These are Emacs 1806 2280 kV motors. They're a little bit smaller than the ones we normally use, but they're the ones that are designed to kind of fit these arms as the mounting holes are very small. We're running five inch props. Um, these are as big as you can fit on this little frame. Let me show you uh, part of the challenge here though, is that as the prop moves around, you can see there's very little clearance above where the ESC has to go. So I was talking about putting the ESC on top of this little bracket, but unfortunately as the prop comes around, it's gonna hit it. So unless you can get an ESC that fits in that little space, then we've got only got a couple of options. So I'm gonna use these 12 amp ESCs. These are the Simon K Emacs ones. I use them on loads of my 250 class craft and they work really well. The problem is, is they're just slightly too thin Thick to fit underneath and if I try to mount them on top hopefully if I can just sort this you can see that they're very very close to the props and they're potentially going to get hit if the prop deflects at all so my option really to mount it um, is to really put it underneath the arms which isn't going to be as elegant a solution so what I'm going to have to try and do is to, uh, what I've done is I've pulled these wires through to the bottom so that I can get to them easily. And then I'm just going to solder the three wires from the ESC there and kind of mount it and route the wires around the landing gear. Again, not very elegant. I just wish they'd thought this through a little bit more in terms of how it was built and it'll kind of look a little bit like that. That'll mean that the prop is clear of everything. Just a shame that if they had lifted this top plate and made a bit more room here, we would have had a lot more options for different ESC mounts and it's very possible to do. Hopefully they'll do that in the next version because it could come up easily another three or four millimeters and not hit the prop. So the next thing we'll have to do then is mount each of the motors. You can see that here the screws go through the holes that are in the arms perfectly and they catch the motor great. They're easily long enough and they're not catching the bottom of the motor and the hole in the middle of the arm is easily enough for the circlip to spin in as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, solder the ESCs to the motor wires and then I'm going to uh, connect all the motors up and can put all the arms together. The only other thing you need to be careful of is just think about the actual screws on top. You'll notice there's black and silver. What you need to do is just hold the nut at the top and spin the motor in the direction it's supposed to be and make sure that the nut is tightening up. So the silver ones that I've got here go in the top right hand corner and bottom left and then these black ones that are still in their packet will go on the other two sides. So let me just stop here, go and install all that stuff, um, put the ESCs onto the cables, zip tie them to the bottom, and then we can come back and have a look at how we're gonna connect all the wires up onto this power distribution board. So let me do that and come straight back. So now we've done that, we have them all connected onto the arms. You can see they look all right. They're nowhere near as nice as they probably could be. They just make the arms look a bit thick. 
cables are going to be visible. So what we need to do now is put the power cables to the top and bottom pads at the back so that clearly like labeled plus and minus so with a bit of routing we should be able to catch those on the pads and then the signal pins to the middle the front power cables i'm going to put them around and uh, through the bottom so i can actually solder them at the base as well so let me do that quickly and i'll come back and show you what that looks like so now we're starting to look like a quadcopter. We have all the connections made up here. So at the bottom, the power distribution board has the power for the rear ESC soldered onto those pads as we talked about. And I've also connected the signal and ground lines from each of the ESCs onto those middle tracks in the power distribution board. Those middle tracks then go to the front of the craft and then are soldered onto two flying leads, which are these two ones here with the white signal cables, one for one motor, one for the other. And then the other two leads are from the front two motors, just like you connect in a normal quadcopter. I'll show you what the front looks like for the power. So here is the wires um, going up around the front. Again, doesn't look very neat because of the ESC placement. Um, and we've had to capture those with these blobs of solder at the front. Again, all the negatives to one side of the power distribution board, positives to the other. And that's the way it looks at the top. If the camera will focus, and kind of have to work the cables through and then just um, pop them through the holes and then just catch them with those solder blobs. At the back, here's a slightly closer view. You can see here that for the signal cables, I've actually clipped off the middle red wires, the plus five volts. We don't have anything to connect those to. You just need to make sure that you've clipped them off and they're well out of the way of anything and they're not going to short circuit or touch anything else. I'm gonna cover the whole bottom with a piece of black tape. Don't like the idea of all of these exposed connections when it lands upside down. So now we have everything connected. We have our receiver, we have our CC3D, we have all the motors connected. We're ready to plug it into the computer and use the GCS software for the CC3D to configure everything. So let's fire that up and very quickly talk about that process. Now here, of course, we're building ours with a CC3D flight controller. So we're using something called the ground control software, GCS. And the way that I would always recommend you doing this is to run through the vehicle setup wizard. And this is actually images shot from one of our other videos, which was part of the CC3D series where we went through and set everything up. What I recommend is follow the series on the channel that's already there. We have series for things like APM, PixHawk, CC3D, NASA32, MultiWii, Seriously Pro 3, you name it, we've got all sorts on here. So the flight controller that you're using, there will be a useful playlist on the Payless 360 channel that you can watch that will make sure you can set it up properly. So rather than me go through all the detail, I'm just going to talk about the process in very general terms. So what we've done here is we've gone through the setup wizard. It's done some nice things like helped us set up and configure the craft. I have actually mounted my CC3D backwards or 180 degrees rotated on the yaw axis just so that I could get the pins at the front. Um, it was the way that I could get it as close to the central gravity without having to start soldering additional wires and things onto the PDB. Um, and I've gone through and set it all up. So now I've done that, the only thing left to do is I'm going to actually try and fly it, not without putting the top on. I'm actually going to try and see whether or not I can place the battery to get the center of gravity roughly in the middle. I'm using the default PID settings for a ZMR 250, which is one of the things you can choose as part of the ground station control software. They're pretty standard PIDs actually for the CC3D. So what? let's go in the back garden, set the COG up, and I'm just gonna try and fly it without the big bulbous green top on that has all the FPV gear on it. So the good news is it actually flies. So the configuration, the wiring and everything that we've done has been successful. The interesting thing here is that it's feeling very twitchy because it's actually hovering at about 31, 32% throttle. Now we haven't put the top on which has all the FPV equipment in there, which is gonna add a little bit more weight, but this is very promising. It looks like the motors and props that we've chosen, which are these 1806 
motors with the five inch props with the three inch pitch is going to be enough to give us a good comfortable flight so now we know that this actually works what we can do is land it let's take it back inside and we'll double check everything looks okay after the flight and then pop the top on does mean that we're getting very close now to being able to take this out onto the field and give it a proper test flight. So we're actually recording in the back garden. The reason is, is that uh, the weather in the UK has been absolutely terrible and even today it's really windy. But what I wanted to do was just show you what this thing flies like because the one single chance that I had to fly it in the field, unfortunately the video was corrupted. So here it is. It absolutely flies lovely. It is getting buffeted a little bit by the wind hovering about 54% throttle with the motors and props that we have on here and it looks fab. It's not one of those models that's going to allow us to fly line of sight a long way away and it's not one of those models that I'd probably pick to do FPV flying through trees where I'm looking for something that's going to be super robust. But for one that can easily fit in your bag and kind of take to the field, I think this is a great option. So in summary, what do I think? Well, I think it looks fantastic, but there are a couple of limitations and considerations that you need to be aware of when you're buying and ordering the model. First of all, is there there is 250 and 280 class versions. This is the 250 one. Now we've already looked at some of the limitations here with the 250 class. The first is that ESC mount that we looked at when we were building it. The fact I've had to put my ESCs out here on the arms isn't ideal and if they had designed it with uh, these portions slightly higher above, a little bit more room and also potentially a little bit further out the arm, we could have used lots of other ESCs that are simply too big just to fit in there. The other thing that I'd say here is that the space in the canopy at the top is pretty tight. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's just enough space. There's about four millimeters clearance between the bottom of the FPV transmitter and the top of the CC3D that we used. So you're gonna have to get a flight controller that's very small and has side pointed pins. If they have pins that point up, then you won't be able to fit in your FPV transmitter. It will fit five inch props and as we've seen it actually flies really nicely hovering at about 42 uh, 45 percent throttle so it has plenty of power with the 1806s and very maneuverable as well the other downside of course is that a lot of criticism has been laid at the door of these arms which aren't particularly thick i don't think they're full carbon fiber i think they actually have something in the middle with carbon fiber wedged around the outside so i've actually scanned these arms and created stl files so if you want to print these in plastic for replacements if you break these then you can however saying that i have had uh, an accident with this thing where it ended up flying pretty much full tilt into a wall and as you can see we um, pretty much snapped every single propeller on the entire quadcopter so I picked it up expecting it to be shattered and not to be able to film this final part of the video but in reality what I found was the only thing that had happened with apart from snapping every single prop on the thing um, a couple of the bolts had actually popped out. Now putting them back in, they seem to be pretty solid back in there again, so it didn't seem to strip the threads. But whereas the arms were, a couple of the arms were quite floppy, they were floppy because the screws were starting to come out the bottom. Now I don't know whether that's what they're supposed to do, but in the result of that is that I didn't actually snap any of the arms. So that's two crashes I've had with this, one very, very spectacular, and the frame has survived it beautifully where I expected to have to start replacing pieces. So maybe these arms aren't as delicate as some people make out, but also if you're going to be FPV flying through trees, maybe you know, you're know you gonna want to uh, buy upgraded arms or make sure you have lots of spares about too. Last thing to be careful of is, as you can see, the camera is extremely proud. Uh, you can see the little nick on the camera lens when it slammed into the wall. Um, luckily, it didn't destroy the camera, but you have to be careful here because there's nothing surrounding the camera and you might be able to mount it a little bit further back if you are being clever, but with the cameras I'm using here, it is very proud and very prone to get hit as it did when it smashed into the wall. 
The nice thing is, is because the mount is only held at the top, the mount actually swung away into the body and protected the camera. And because all my cameras are actually mounted on uh, elastic anyway, that's just the way I do it, um, a lot of that energy was absorbed in a way that didn't actually crack anything. So that's everything you need to be aware of. What about everything else? Well, I've pretty much proven that it does take crashes reasonably well. I can see that they've obviously tested that and I like the way it flies. With a little bit of thought, you can get a quadcopter that looks absolutely fantastic. And every time I've flown this, I've had comments from people. The nice thing as well is that the camera mount is settable so you can decide what angle you want it with it being pivoted at the top by undoing those screws you can actually decide on what out camera angle you want you can see here mine's up about 10 degrees which is fine for the way I fly and if you want something that uh, that looks like this um, I think the orange one actually looks slightly nicer now having played with the green then it's definitely worth considering so hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to build it. We've gone through and uh, built it and also tested it out. The facts and figures on the previous flight in the field should hopefully help you decide on the motors, props and other things that you're going to put on here as well. Thanks again to banggood.com for sending us this frame to try out. And thank you to all of the subscribers who suggested that we actually go through, build it, fly it and have a more detailed review of the frame as an actual flying quadcopter. Take the time to subscribe to the channel and join the Payless 360 community. The videos that we produce are all on our channel and they're all arranged into easy to use playlists. So if you click on the playlist tab, then you'll be able to see all of the videos that we have collected into individual playlists that make it easier to find videos you're interested in. If you click on any single one of these playlists, then you'll actually be taken to the playlist and you'll be able to see all of the videos laid out one after the other and either can play them individually or play all. Or if you came and saw the video that you've just watched by accident and you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe. But also if you look at the top of the description underneath the video that you've just watched, usually if it's part of a playlist one of the first things in the description will be a link back to the playlist so you can find all the other interesting videos that you might like thanks again for watching please like do subscribe and very happy flying